Hi guys, Grant Training Systems, welcome back. Today I wanna to talk about hip pain and how we can not be confused by all the anatomy in our hip, start stretching it so we can get rid of the back pain and also obviously the hip pain. So what I want you to do is you, you don't need a spin bike or anything like that, but you do need something in which you can get your foot up on top, if you will, so like a hamstring stretch, but the most important thing is we're not gonna focus on our hamstring. Now, I've got two different cameras and two different angles. I've got a regular angle, which would be like the TV, and then I have the Instagram IGTV angle because I'm shooting it with my camera also. So I'm gonna use both cameras to speak to so you have a better understanding of what I'm trying to do in this stretch. Now, if I wanted to straighten my right leg, I could turn my foot out, so my leg out, and I could very easily straighten it. For this example, I'm gonna pretend that my right foot is at 12 o'clock on a clock. And right now, my left foot would be about at a nine, about at the nine, right? Well, the thing is, is that's not how our hip really works. And you would recognize that because as I start to move my foot towards 11 o'clock. You recognize maybe in this camera that I've also brought a chair with me. I'm gonna discuss why in a second. But as I start to turn in this position, a, it's gonna be harder for me to keep my leg straight for my hamstring, but it's also gonna be more difficult for me to straighten out my hip and my knee. Now let's go over a little bit of anatomy here. Somewhere in this picture, I'm gonna show you right now the rectus femoris, which is part of your quadricep that crosses both your knee and your hip. So that might be causing you to stay in a broken position like this. We also have, have the hip flexor, the major one, so the psoas major, which is this, which might pull you from here. And we also then have the iliacus, which is a smaller but strong muscle, the hip capsule, and also the QL. So we've got a bunch of anatomy going on, which could very easily be causing our pain, our problems, and then nonetheless, all of the fascia that wraps all around it. So what I wanna try to do here is put myself in a position where my body can find the tightness. Because as I always say, who really cares what it is as long as we can address it, alleviate it, and get rid of the pain? And actually, this stretch right here was one that really helped me finally get rid of my last 10% of my back pain and stop waking up in the middle of the evening with basically radiating nerve pain shooting down my left hip. So what I'm gonna do here, as you've already recognized, is my foot is now in the 11 o'clock position. Now, it's already difficult for me to straighten my knee and also my hip. So maybe you can see in the other camera better how I'm really trying to straighten my hip and my knee. Now, what I will do is I'm gonna air quotes, cheat a little bit because I'm not concerned with my right leg nor my hamstring. So I'm actually gonna bend it a little bit and that will not only allow me to focus on my hip here, but if you look at the angle in which my hip is uh, how do I want to say this, is standing, if you will, I can now rotate my hip and my body and my core, my pelvis, into a better position, which is why you can see in this camera, I have this chair. Because when a muscle is stabilizing, it is contracting, and what is contracting, it can't stretch. Think about your bicep when it's shortening, and if you're trying to stretch it at the same time, it's not possible. So we need the body to relax, especially in this stretch, because literally our balance standing leg is what we are trying to open up in order for the muscle and the nervous system to be able to work with us and not against us, which is why often I will have two things or I will completely lean against the chair because already now, not only does it allow me to lean against the chair and really push my hip forward, opening it up, but it already takes the tension off of my leg because I was getting a bit tired as I was talking throughout this stretch. And so now I can really focus on locking this knee out, getting this hip to go straight, and focusing on if my foot is forward or not. Now, I could also turn this into a hamstring stretch if I want to too. That is not a problem. However, what I wanna focus on is whatever is going on in this area. What you might recognize is that you can't keep your foot at 11 o'clock and you've gotta keep it at 9, 10, 
10 and a half, whatever, because you're limited by your own motion. But what will happen as it starts to open up and it starts to get better, you'll realize that you can straighten the knee out, you can straighten the hip out, and you can start to pull on your spine upwards, really getting yourself in a good neutral position. And then you can rotate to where you're really truly in alignment and not a little bit off to the angle trying to cheat. What this is gonna do is this is gonna find out what is tight in you and it's gonna start to allow this to open up because if we always have these parking brakes up like our hip flexors, we're always gonna be stuck in a position like this and when we try to stand up, that is gonna be basically like trying to drive to the bakery with your parking brake up. Of course you can do it, you're gonna have a bunch of alarms going off, which you will in your body too, and usually when you just set the parking brake down so the alarms would stop, we end up taking a bunch of ibuprofen, going to the doctor, getting a cortisone shot, going into a pain management system instead of an alleviation and elimination process, and all we need to do is understand what is managing it and or what is fixing it. So the most important thing at the end is to focus on both sides. So if you're able to do that side well, now you wanna make sure that you can do right, the same with this and you can compare both sides. I've been focusing a lot on this side lately, so I'm in a much better position in this stretch. And the other, I think, huge tip, and consider this the bonus, is the idea in the way that our body works. You should look at it as Team Navy Seals versus Team Toddlers. If you are playing a game of tug of war and those are your two teams, it's not gonna be fun for either side and it's not gonna be fair. This is the way your body works. If one side is completely out of balance versus the other one, it will make your nervous system go crazy. And if any of you guys know Wim Hof, we obviously understand what happens when our nervous system works with us. And if any of you have any pain, we totally get what happens when your nervous system works against you. So let's get the nervous system on our side so we understand what we want to do. Let's balance out the two sides and you will recognize that this idea of managing your pain will eliminate itself because the causation of the pain the mechanism of the pain will go away and it all happened with no surgery, no medicine, no voodoo doctors, no praying to Jesus or anything like that. So if you've enjoyed this video, please subscribe to the channel, please share it with your friends and if you want any more help, I have an unbelievable coaching program where I'm more than happy to speak to all of you about it. So in six weeks, we could literally get you to a new you when it comes to lower back and hip pain. So if you wanna check the links out, they are all below. If not, all good. Every single video comes out once a week, sometimes twice a week, depending on how busy I am. I hope to see all of you very soon and I hope you all have a beautiful day with, after this stretch, less hip and lower back pain.